Alright, so I got a decent RNG in that run, but basically that's probably the best way that I found to get the speedrun achievement is you need the cartographer's map because uh, the maps in this can vary quite a bit. Uh, it can be very useful to find the arcana shop and the regular shop or the relic shop uh, quickly and then maybe the curse shop if you're feeling lucky but it helps tremendously because uh, otherwise you spend a lot of time wandering around like see I, there I had a uh, just a little over 10 minutes to uh, to finish the run and I, I skipped a bunch of stuff I actually didn't get very many good items uh, the time could come down quite a bit uh, the, the level generation RNG was actually wasn't that bad it was mostly just the, the fact that I didn't really get any good items. There were no good cursed items. There wasn't anything like glass cannon or golden armor of Midas, which would have really helped me to shave some time off. But uh, I, that's a pretty, pretty good example of how to get that achievement. It's actually not that difficult if you have the right setup. So let me go through the second part of the ending here, and I'll go ahead and I'll explain uh, why I chose what I did. I see a pitiful amount of relics. Really didn't have much of anything that run. It was mostly just good luck with the level generation RNG. So like I said, you're gonna want the Pathfinder's map. Just so you know where to go, and that way you can decide uh, you know, if you want to skip something or not. You know, if you get the the non-cursed uh, NPCs, like the one that exchanges the uh, the Arcana for a new one or the, the pinata, then you might want to skip those. Uh, if you do have enough, you think you have enough attack power to break the pinata, it could be worth going there sometimes to kind of, you know, give yourself another chance at something good to use. But in general, uh, I, I generally skip most of those. What you want to hit is the arcana shop and the relic shop because those have the highest chances of having something you can use. Now, to offset the fact that you're not starting with an actual item that's going to help you fight, uh, what I have here is I have the Chaotic Rift, which is, uh, at least for me, was the last uh, Chaos Arcana that I unlocked, which meant that I had to beat the game eight times. And once you get that, uh, you get this. It does not have any offensive capabilities, so you can't do any damage. Uh, what's great about it is that it allows you to move, it seems like it makes you move faster than sprinting. I actually haven't tested it, but what's also good about it is that uh, while you're in the Rift, while you're teleporting, you actually can't be hit by anything. Now normally, let me go back here for a second, normally you need the Limo's Leaf to have that kind of uh, ability. So I used to run with this a lot before I started using the Chaotic Dash, because this makes it so as long as you're in the dash animation you're invincible. I believe if you get a, a synergy or a combination of the Limo's Leaf and the Greased Boots, that I think for your whole animation you'll be invincible for even longer, but I haven't actually gotten both of them in a run yet. So if you don't want to use the Chaotic Dash, uh, I definitely recommend trying to get the Limo's Leaf. That can help you to avoid some of the more difficult attacks. So I just use Shearing Chain because it's low cooldown. It's really good single target damage. Uh, it's good for both the trash mobs and the bosses. Uh, there's probably a better single target move, but this one's actually nice for knocking enemies into pits as well. So it kind of serves a little bit of a double purpose there. And for my signature, I use Distortion Beam because it has a pretty good balance between crowd control, uh, especially when you have it powered up and when you have the signature bar filled up. And it's pretty good for bosses as well because you can put it on them after they get out of stun and you can tack on, I'd say, maybe like another 5-10% to damage. And then for basic, I just use Wind Slash. Uh, this is the one that I like the most because it just uh, combos well with the rest of my uh, build. But it varies. Uh, there's going to be tons of crazy builds for this game that, you know, far beyond what I'm going to come up with. So it's up to you. But yeah, I just got the uh, the speedrun achievement there. So that's actually a pretty good, uh, I'd say a pretty good guide or foundation for what to look for. In terms of your other two arcana, uh, you'll definitely want to balance between crowd control so that you can kind of get through the, the forced combat rooms quicker. And you're going to want something that actually will work well on a single target because you are going to have to fight four bosses. Like that that uh, build I had there was actually pretty shitty. I didn't get any good relics, there were no good cursed items, and my arcana uh, build was not the best. The selection that I had was not great. But you generally want something that's going to help with the crowd control and the bosses. Uh, if you have one or the other in this game, it's a lot harder to get through it effectively. 
or even consistently because <laughs> uh, the bosses it can be a lot harder to do damage to them during a stun and since it takes you know a couple seconds or several waves of attacks uh, three four or five respectively depending on what boss you're fighting in what order then uh, it can be nice to have something that will work well with a single target because that way you won't have to go through so many phases and risk taking damage and losing time. Anyway, I hope this helps people get the speedrun achievement, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.